Number six, write a balanced equation describing each of the following chemical reactions, and we have letter D. In this one, it says aqueous solutions of phosphoric acid and potassium hydroxide react to produce aqueous potassium dihydrogen phosphate and liquid water. Okay, so we got to write an equation. Let's see, can we use our context clues of the sentence that they provided to get a chemical equation? Well, let's see. I'm starting from the start, right, of the, of the sentence. You start from the start. Aqueous solutions of phosphoric acid and potassium hydroxide react. That's the first part of the sentence. It's saying these two solutions are reacting with each other. So they have to be mixed with each other. They have to be added to each other. So when I say that, it seems that phosphoric... Oh, that's terrible, Christina. Get, get with the handwriting. <laughs> phosphoric acid is reacting or adding to, they're adding together, with potassium, potassium hydroxide... Hmm. To produce, if you are producing something, you're forming, right? And in chemistry, that is yielding. To form something, to yield, to produce, to make, you're making something. They all mean the same exact thing, okay? That means that a reaction happened, and now you just have to say what happened on the other side. And when we do all of this stuff, you show that by adding a arrow. So phosphoric acid is mixing or adding together with potassium hydroxide to produce, that's this word, or that's this symbol, aqueous potassium dihydrogen phosphate. So this side is potassium dihydrogen phosphate, long name phosphate and liquid water. So I'm just going to say water over here. So it seems like, and if I just make this a little bit prettier, let's see. Um, it seems like we have four different compounds here that I have to just write out and get a, a balanced equation. So I'm just going to work with left to right. I'm going to first work with phosphoric acid. What is phosphoric acid? You could either memorize your acids, but I'll show you how we get to this name, right? First off, anything that is an acid has to have an H in the front, all right? The hydrogen in the front makes an acid an acid. So a hydrogen is always a plus one charge because it's in the first group. It's not always, but in this case it is, like 99% of the time. So hydrogen is a plus one. And now we have this idea with phosphoric. Now, when we did naming acids, just know that if you end with an ic acid, where did you come from? How did you get to an ending of ic acid, just like here, ic acid? The, 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 the correct answer is that you had to have a polyatomic, so you got to memorize those polyatomics, but you had a polyatomic that ended with A-T-E. A-T-E polyatomics, eight goes with ick acid. You could think of this by saying, I ate something and it was icky. <laughs> so if this was phosphoric acid, I know that my polyatomic was phosphate. And now I have to recall what phosphate is. Oh, phosphate is PO4 three minus. You have to memorize those polyatomics. Now I do the crisscross method to just get the, uh, the compound. I have one phosphate. However, this three tells me that I need three hydrogen. So phosphoric acid is H3PO4. Anything else that they tell us? Well, they said aqueous solutions of. So I know that this is aqueous, which is AQ. You just have to include your states. Just know that there's four states, solid, liquid, 
gas, and aqueous, okay? This case they said aqueous, which just means that it will dissolve. Aqueous means you will dissolve in, in solution. So AQ is aqueous. Plus, literally plus, right? Potassium hydroxide. So here we go again. I have to make this compound. Potassium is in group one, so that's a plus one. And hydroxide is another polyatomic. We got to memorize it. Hydroxide is OH minus one. So you can just use flashcards for your uh, polyatomics, you know? Put the symbol on the front, put the name on the back, phosphate, and then hydroxide, and then just, you know, keep flipping back and forth, just doing a little studying. Do your crisscross method. You have one potassium and, uh, sorry, you have one hydroxide needed, and you have one potassium, right? So it's just KOH. And state, well, they told us that it was aqueous solutions of phosphoric acid and potassium hydroxide. So that means that this also was aqueous. This is going to yield potassium dihydrogen phosphate. Okay, so more formulas. Potassium, just like we did before, was a K plus one. And now dihydrogen phosphate. This is also a polyatomic, if you just want to memorize it. However, you can kind of figure it out from the name. We know already that phosphate was PO4 three minus, right? So PO4 three minus. However, how many H's are you adding to your phosphate? Dihydrogen. Di, remember, means two. So if I'm adding two H's, and remember each H is a plus one, if I'm adding two of them, right, what is my number going to drop down to? It's not going to be a minus three. I'm literally adding a two here. So the overall charge of my dihydrogen phosphate would be a negative one. So if I just quickly rearrange this, dihydrogen phosphate is H2, that's the dihydrogen part, phosphate, which is the PO4. But since you added those two pluses, this jumps down to a negative one. And now I do my crisscross method. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, right? So it would just be KH2PO4. And what they say? It said that it was aqueous. So AQ again, plus liquid water. Well, we, we know what water is, right? H2O. And they said that it was a liquid, so I put an L here. Okay, now, as soon as I write a balanced equation, well, actually, as soon as I write an equation, I have to make sure that it's balanced. So let's see if we can grab easy um, elements that are not balanced on both sides and see if we can balance them. So I'm just gonna pick out some elements that I see, okay. So I have potassium, I have one potassium on the left, I have one potassium on the right, so that's all cool. I have, let's see, I have one phosphorus, and I have one phosphorus, so that's all cool. I have, let's see now, I have four oxygens here, plus one oxygen here. So four plus one is a total of five oxygens on the product side, and I have four oxygens plus one, which is five, so that's balanced. And then last but not least, let's do hydrogen. I have three hydrogen plus one hydrogen is four hydrogens total on the left-hand side. I have two hydrogens over here plus two hydrogens over here. Two plus two is four. So turns out that this one, we already balanced it when we wrote it. This is the balanced equation. There are no coefficients in front of oop, in front of all of the compounds, which means that there's a one coefficient, okay? No coefficients in front just mean that you only have one of them, all right? So that, that's it. Guys, what'd you think? Let me know in the comments if this helped you out. And if you want to spread the word out there to your classmates or your friends, 
who are ever in chem or math or physics at the moment, uh, let them know that we can help them out. All right. Hopefully this was fun and I'll see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.